morning, I'm Anthony Harries and I'm going to spend the next 30 minutes describing to you how to actually write a scientific paper. Tony Reid in an earlier lecture discussed with you the principles of writing a paper and I now want to translate this into real writing. And what I want to do is use the example of recurrent tuberculosis in Malawi that we discussed in module one. So I'm going to give you some background to this paper to refresh our memory about it. These were four very good clinical studies done in sub-Saharan Africa in the late 1990s, looking at annual TB recurrence rates in relation to HIV status, carried out in Zaire, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Kenya, Zambia and South Africa. And you can see quite clearly here that if you are HIV positive, you have a much higher risk of, han of having annual TB recurrence rates compared with if you are HIV negative. So if I summarize these four studies, they found that recurrence is increased in patients who were infected with HIV. Therefore, where HIV infection rates are high, we should find increased recurrence rates of tuberculosis. So let us go to Malawi. <clears throat> this shows us data from 1987 to 1999, looking at the proportion of all patients registered nationally who had relapse smear positive pulmonary tuberculosis. And you can see we started at 6% and then declined and stabilized at around 2 or 3 percent. During this 12 years also, there were no recurrent cases of smear negative pulmonary TB or extra pulmonary TB recorded in the TB registers. However, during this 12 years, there were a series of studies done at the district level and at the country level in Malawi looking at HIV prevalence in TB patients. And you can quite clearly see here that prevalence rose from 26% in 1986 up to 77% in the year 2000. So the problem in Malawi was this. Despite rising HIV prevalence rates, relapsed TB cases have stayed the same, and there have been no registered cases of recurrent smear negative pulmonary TB or extra pulmonary TB. And therefore, the NTP was concerned that maybe under routine program conditions, it was missing recurrent tuberculosis. So this is why the study was conducted. It was conducted nationally. Data was collected. The data were analyzed. And now I'm going to describe how we write this paper. So let me go through the beginning of each section, the principles, and then show you how the writing is done. So the principles for the introduction are as follows. We describe the present situation and the background as to why we have carried out the study. We avoid a long comprehensive review and we state clearly at the end of the introduction the aim and objectives of the study. Generally, you should aim for about one and a half pages of an introduction and that is using 1.5 spaces or double space between each line. So this is how we would write the introduction to recurrent tuberculosis. The first paragraph sets the scene. We would say something like this. Africa is currently faced by two intersecting epidemics, HIV and tuberculosis. This has resulted in a tremendous increase in case notifications with increasing morbidity and mortality in HIV-infected TB patients. Second paragraph. Previous studies, however, have found that recurrence is increased in patients who were infected with HIV. And here I would give those four references to those four clinical studies that I mentioned earlier. Therefore, where HIV infection rates are high, we should find increased recurrent rates of tuberculosis. Next paragraph, the problem. In Malawi, despite rising HIV prevalence rates, relapsed TB cases have slightly decreased 
and there have been no registered cases of recurrent smear negative pulmonary TB or extra pulmonary TB. And again here, I would provide references to those studies I mentioned earlier done in Zomba, Mizuzu, Blantar, and in Malawi. Our hypothesis is that the national TB program is missing recurrent TB under routine program conditions. And then the final paragraph of the introduction clearly states the aim of this study. The aim of this study was to determine whether patients who were registered as new TB were previously diagnosed and treated as relapsed smear positive pulmonary TB and recurrent smear negative TB. We then go on to the methods. The principles are as we have described in earlier presentations in this module and the previous module. Subheadings are design, setting, participants, data variables where clearly we talk about sources of data, collection of data and any validation of data, analysis and statistics and ethics approval. So this is how we would write this part of the paper. Design. This was a cross-sectional study involving a structured interview of TB patients. Setting and site visits. General. This is a sub-sub-heading. Malawi is a small country in Africa with high HIV and TB burdens. There is a good DOTS program and all patients spend the first two months of TB treatment in hospital receiving initial phase therapy. Sites. All hospitals in the country that register and treat patients with TB were selected. These included three central hospitals, 22 district hospitals and 18 mission hospitals. These hospitals were visited as part of a routine national TB program supervision. Participants. All patients who were in hospital receiving treatment during the initial phase and who had been registered as new TB were interviewed using a structured pro forma. Patients were identified by going round the TB wards, all patients being admitted to TB wards, in a set fashion and including all patients in their beds. Next subheading, data variables. Variables collected included TB registration number, age, sex, type of TB, and a previous history of tuberculosis. In those who said they had a previous history of TB, they were asked, when did they have it? What type of TB was it? And was treatment completed? Data were collected into a structured pro forma between January and June 1999. Validation of data on previous tuberculosis was done wherever possible using TB identity cards. Analysis and statistics. Sample size was not calculated because this was a national sample. Data were entered into EpiInfo software. The chi-squared test was used to compare differences in proportions between groups and differences at the 5% level P less than 0.05 were regarded as significant. Ethics approval, this is our final subheading under methods. Ethics approval was obtained from the Malawi National Health Science Research Committee. We now go on to results. So again, the basic principles are we report just the facts. We avoid duplication in text and tables. Tables and or a table should clearly be a standalone with a clear heading and explanations as to what is going on in that table. Statistics avoid comparing everything with everything. And generally in the results narrative, aim for about one page. That is using 1.5 spaces or double space between the lines. So let's go on with our paper. First paragraph, basic demographic data. There were 1,254 patients with new TB. There were 575, brackets, 46% men. The mean age of all patients, standard deviation, was 35, brackets, 12 years. Next paragraph, 
The frequency of the previous episode of TB in patients registered as a new case for those with all types of TB and with different types of TB is shown in Table 1. So here's our Table 1 with the heading being Previous TB in patients registered as having new tuberculosis. And you can see that we have three columns. We have headings for each of those columns that go type of TB, registered as new, previous TB. And then in that first column, we have the characteristics, all types, smear positive pulmonary TB, smear negative pulmonary TB, and extra pulmonary TB. And then we have the data. So you can clearly see this, 1,254 patients, 94 of them having previous TB, that being 8%. And for each of those different types of TB, we again have the numerator, the number registered as new TB, and we have the number, basically, and percentage with previous tuberculosis shown on the right-hand side. Next paragraph. Only 9 out of 94 previous episodes were validated with the patient producing an identity card. And finally, the last paragraph, some statistics. Compared to patients with smear-positive pulmonary TB, a previous episode of TB was significantly more common in patients with smear-negative PTB, odds ratio 3.5, 95% confidence interval 2.1 to 5.7, P less than 0.001, and patients with extra pulmonary TB. Odds ratio 2.0, 95% confidence interval 1.1 to 3.7, P less than 0.05. And that brings us to the end of our results section. We then go on to the last part for discussion. So again, remind ourselves of the principles. We start with a brief summary of the findings and what is new. We then discuss the strengths and limitations of the study. We then discuss the possible reasons for the findings. And fourthly, how the findings compare with other studies previously done. And finally, what are the implications of the study? Some people put the limitations of the study right at the end, but I prefer myself to have strengths and limitations together in that second paragraph. So how does this go on with the paper? First paragraph. This study confirms our hypothesis that in the setting of a TB control program, patients with a previous episode of TB were not being identified and were not being properly registered as either relapse or recurrent TB. Incorrect registrations were more common in patients with smear negative pulmonary TB and extra pulmonary TB. Next paragraph. There were three important strengths of this study. First, it was countrywide and therefore probably representative of the situation in Malawi. Second, the same methods of selecting patients and going round the wards were used, and therefore there were no methodological biases. And third, the study adhered to strobe guidelines. These are guidelines published in The Lancet and other journals laying out how we should report on observational studies, such as the one being described. However, there were limitations to the study. First, an episode of previous TB was based mainly on the patient's history, and this may have been incorrect. We could only validate the findings in a small proportion of patients who had identity cards with them. Second, no data were collected on patients who were not in the ward at the time of the interview, and it is possible then that the patient sample was not representative of all patients who should have been in the wards. Thirdly, a systematic inquiry about why TB program staff failed to correctly register previously treated patients was not carried out, and therefore the reasons for incorrect registration are not known. We now go on to discuss possible reasons for the findings, and here we have to be speculative. So for this paper we might say 
The reasons could be that TB officers do not ask the right questions, patients may not disclose their treatment status, and finally, there were no guidelines anyway from the National TB Programme about what to do with recurrent smear negative TB. And therefore, district TB officers may have felt there was no point in knowing about the patient category. Comparison with previous studies. Here, on a literature review, we found no previous studies done. So we have to say there have been no previous studies done examining this aspect of TB control programs. What are the implications of the study? There were three implications. Recurrent TB is being missed, and therefore we need, as a Malawi National TB Control Program, to first discuss the problem with all National TB Program staff in a national seminar, two, issue guidelines from the central unit to all districts about how to correctly manage recurrent TB, and third, we will incorporate guidelines into a revised National TB Manual in the following year. Then the final paragraph concludes. And very simply, we say something like this. In conclusion, this study has identified a weakness of reporting in the Malawi National TB Programme and steps are being made to rectify the situation. And by concluding like that, we have now completed the main body, the main part of this scientific paper. Thank you. Thank you.